Hello everyone! Welcome to our general mathematics class. For today, we will have the introduction to functions writing a function rule. In many situations, data is collected by conducting a survey or an experiment. To visualize the data, it is arranged in a table or a graph. Most often, a function rule is needed to predict additional values of the independent variable. To understand this one better, let's have an example. In here, we will see the number of CDs, 246810, and the cost, 2448, 72, 96, and 120. Notice that the values under the cost is dependent on the number of CDs. The more CDs you'll buy, the bigger money it will cost you. Thus, the number of CDs is our independent variable X while the cost is our Y. Going back to our table and inspecting its values, you'll pay 24 pesos for 2 CDs, 48 pesos for 4 CDs until 120 pesos for 10 CDs. So how much will 1 CD cost? You're right, it's 12 pesos each. Writing that into a function rule, we'll have y is equal to 12x or f of x is equal to 12x. Because again, the cost, which is y, depends on the number of CDs, which is x, and each CD costs 12 pesos. Let us consider another example. As you can see, all the values of x and y are almost the same except for the signs. And the values of y are all positive. This is a special relationship named as absolute value. So our function rule would be y is equal to the absolute value of x or f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Let's now proceed to problem 3. A taxi ride costs 40 pesos plus 15 pesos per kilometer driven. Write a function rule about the cost of a ride. In here, the cost of a ride is our y since it is dependent on our x which is the number of kilometers driven. Therefore, our rule here is y is equal to 40 plus 15x or f of x is equal to 40 plus 15x. This is because a passenger will pay 40 pesos even if the ride has not yet started, plus 15 pesos per kilometer. Let's now have problem 4. When diving in the ocean, you must consider how much pressure you will experience from diving a certain depth. From the atmosphere, we will experience 14.7 pounds per square inches, and for every foot we dive down into the ocean, we experience another 0.44 PSI in pressure. Before we get the function rule or equation here, let us first understand the pressure we experience in the ocean. At sea level, the air that surrounds us presses down on our bodies. You don't feel it because the fluids in your body are pushing outward with the same force. But, dive down into the ocean even a few feet though, a noticeable change occurs. You can feel an increase in pressure on your eardrums. This is due to an increase in hydrostatic pressure. The deeper you go under the ocean, the greater the pressure of the water pushing down on you. That would easily snap our bones. Now going back to our given, the pressure that we will experience depends on the depth that we will go into dive. Therefore, our rule would be y equals 14.7 plus 0.44x or f of x is equals to 14.7 plus 0.44x. Remember that the pressure is equals to 14.7 psi when simply staying in the ocean plus 0.44 psi for every foot we will dive down. Now how far can you dive without experiencing more than 58.7 psi of pressure on your body? To answer this, we will be using the function rule, y equals 14.7 plus 0.44x. 58.7 is the value of y because it's a pressure on your body, 
So we'll simply substitute this one to our y. To isolate x on one side, we have to subtract 14.7 on both sides. Operating the left side, 58.7 minus 14.7 is equals to 44. Divide both sides by 0 0.44 to get x. Therefore, our final answer is 100. With this, we can say that for a diver not to experience more than 58.7 psi of pressure on his or her body, he or she should not dive more than 100 feet. That is all for today. Thank you and see you on our next video lesson.